Welcome back to the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Parkside Cabin Rentals. You can't beat one of their terrific layouts and locations. Visit them online and look up Chestnut Lodge, for example. All of their different uh, cabins up there have different names. Check Chestnut Lodge. Four bedrooms, just a short walk from right there on the strip in Gatlinburg, right downtown. Or book the two-story Maple Leaf Lodge. If you're wanting a place where you can get a lot of your friends in there, this place sleeps up to 14 guests. Two stories, again, right next to the Strip in Gatlinburg. Look, they've got places secluded up in the mountains that you want to be away from everyone. They got it. If you want a place that's more down in the heart of the action right there in Gatlinburg, they've got those two. Visit ParksideCabinRentals.com. Go through all of their layouts and all the locations. It's an easy website to navigate, and you will love all of the opportunities and all of the offers that they have. Parkside Cabin Rentals. Okay, take a look at this graphic. This is from 24-7 Sports. It is the blue chip ratio for 2023, and here's the deal. Every year since 2011, the national champion has been at plus 50% in terms of signing four- and five-star players over the four previous classes. In other words, if you want to win a national title, you need to recruit more fours and fives on your roster than threes and twos. Sounds simple, but not everybody does it. Those are the only teams for this year in the country who have more fours and fives on their roster than twos and threes on their roster. Uh, now, they don't count walk-ons because technically, you know, they don't get star rankings in most situations. And also, they don't count transfers. And the reason they don't, it's kind of interesting, the teams that win national titles have been so loaded with their own recruited talent that so far they haven't had to go out and bring in a bunch of transfers like Georgia last Georgia. year. Yeah. So it makes sense. I was like, how do you not count transfers? Well, the big boys are recruiting at a level where they don't have to go and live by the transfer. So all that said, Tennessee not among the teams that fit the 24-7 sports blue star ratio criteria. So I ask you, Jimmy Himes, can a coach's system be good enough to lift okay talent all the way to a national title? We, we've talked about, I, I love the fact that mm -hmm. you've got a coach who can coach guys up. Love it. We saw last year, he got a team, and there was talent mm -hmm. on that team. You saw it get drafted in the NFL. I don't know how many of those guys were on draft list this time last year. Mm -hmm. But he could lift it all the way to 11-2. and two. Can you lift a team to a national title with your offensive system? Uh, with okay talent, no. Now, if I were to explain it, all right, I'm going to try to explain <laughs> it. All right. All right. <laughs> if Georgia is the benchmark and their talent level is at 10 and your talent level is at 6 or 7, the answer is no. If your talent level is at 8 or 9, you could. You've got to be close. You can't have a distance gap yeah so but with what tennessee has right now i'm going to say no they're not ready to do that but i do think you can win a national championship with this system if your talent is almost equal to the best if they have another top 10 recruiting class like they did last year yes. now you're getting into the ballpark you'll be in this ratio thing. yes do we know where tennessee's percent how close were they to the right there okay no. now that's what i agree I, the answer is no because what do the, a lot of those teams have in common they won the national championship, especially as of late, with an elite quarterback, a big-time offense, and dudes on defense, four- and five-star guys, to get you stops when you need it. The not necessarily makers. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think Tennessee still ha does not have those full ingredients yet. They're missing the defense part They're of dude, it. They're dude deficient. <laughs> yes. There's a dude deficiency. And, and maybe they have them. They just haven't been developed yet. So I, I do think the, the fact that you can get more out – uh, a more out of less right now is a great sign, mm -hmm. but you still need to add to that, I think. And I will go along with, with that part of it to why Tennessee, it would be harder for them to win a national championship with a system because when you've got those superior athletes like Georgia did on defense, mm -hmm. that system doesn't work as well because mm -hmm. these guys are just good enough. Hey, do your thing. We'll take care of what they do. And I thought Georgia kind of did that mm -hmm. last year. Georgia was the one team – it was able to just to go out there and, and take you out of your game. Right. So I'm, I'm going to say no when it gets to the elite guys because the individual athlete can, can stop your athlete who needs a little bit of help from that. And when, when you had system versus talent, John, when I was thinking about talent, the first thing I thought about was Kirby Smart and what he is able to accumulate at Georgia year after year after year. That's an NFL defense. You're asking a lot for your system to overcome NFL talent on defense. And we saw last year, what Tennessee have, like six points until midway through the fourth quarter? And uh, Hendon Hooker had been sacked six times. 
It wasn't a fair well, match. And look at TCU. I thought about T TCU. TCU was here. They come out of nowhere. They've got a good offensive system, and Georgia's talent looked a little better. Yeah. <laughs> a little. Um, <laughs> where and they barely got by the skin of their teeth against Ohio State, which had, who the, talent. had talent. the talent. Exactly. So another one. I've compared Josh Heupel to the, a lot of Tennesseans hate this guy, but I'm just talking about what an incredible coach he was. I think he's just all-time Mount Rushmore, Steve Spurrier, mm -hmm. because what he did at Florida with his system. Mm -hmm. Then he goes to South Carolina. And gets yeah. them to 11, and he changed his system. And he got them to 11. But the thing is, Steve Spurrier, as genius as he was, he won the national championship at Florida where he had the talent. He didn't win it. He got them to 11 wins at South Carolina. Got South Carolina to an SEC championship game. But he didn't have the talent, and then won the national championship at South Carolina. So I think that's, that's where the proof's in the pudding. I mean, here's the deal. That blue, char, that blue chip ratio thing has held up every year since 2011. So that's 11 straight championships going into this year. At some point, you got to say, okay, this matters. Yeah. This means something. So, there's a ceiling. Sure. Yeah, there's a ceiling. Mm -hmm. And it, it's going to take at least one more recruiting class where you're in the top 10 to probably get Tennessee into the bottom of that list, and right. then, yeah. you're, then you're in the mix. Yeah. All right, very good, interesting stuff. When we come back, everyone was talking about the Big Ten this week and the long distances their teams will have to travel. But have you looked at Tennessee's future uh, road trips when you throw Oklahoma and Texas into the mix? I figured Oklahoma would be the longest road trip. Austin, Texas is the longest road <laughs> trip. We'll take a look at what the SEC is getting itself into, and does it mean fewer fans travel around the conference in the future? We'll debate. Come on back on the Sports Source.